All right, now that we have our out team installed, let's learn how to start a project. So I'm going to bring up my Altium here. You'll see that Altium brought up the last project I was working on. That's what Altium does. It remembers where you were at when you shut it down. It starts it up in the same place. I'll go back to License Management. You can also find it here. Top right, License. Click on it. Here we go. And I see that I'm connected to the server. And I'm currently using this license in use. If I wasn't, I can disconnect and say, hey, here's what it looks like when I powered up brand new fresh day. What do I want to do? I want to reconnect so I can connect to altium.ece. It's going to connect to it. I look here. I see my four seats out of 180 are available. That's the private license server we want to use, the one that has 180 seats. So I come over here and say use license. Now I see I'm in use, so I am now licensed. I can now start a project. If I'm not licensed, well, let me start a project. It, uh, it just sits there. So remember, if you're off campus, to use the VPN so you can see the license server and check out a license. So let's come up here to the top left. I can click on File, New, and I'm going to start a new project. I don't want to start a new schematic right away because this, then the schematic won't be related to anything. I want to start a project first and then whatever I put under that project will be related, right? like a relational database. So I'm going to tell it, start a new project. Here it comes. It says, all right, where do you, what do you want to name it? I'm going to say this is going to be OpAmp. That's going to be the name of my project. And where do I want to save it? Well, I think I'll just... Let's see, I already have one there, right? So I can take this guy and delete it. And we'll start new. There's one that was misspelled. Okay, so I can go to my local disk. I can tell it new folder. We'll call it op-amp, and I can tell it that's where I want to save. Select the folder, and create the project. Now you'll see I have this project available here. It says op-amp project PCB. No documents added. So right now I have a project with no documents. If I come up here and right click on it I can say add new to project and what am I going to put under there well I definitely want a schematic so I'll tell it add a schematic and then I'll come up here and right click and say add new to project I'm going to want a PCB or a printed circuit board so I tell it add PCB all right, so there's the PCB, there's the schematic. Uh, you'll notice there's a little red folder symbol here. Red means I haven't saved it yet. Even though I generated it, it technically doesn't exist in Altium yet until you save it. So I'll come up here in the top left and tell it, Save All. And what do I want to name my PCB? Well, I don't want to leave it PCB1 because... If I leave that default like half of everybody else does, everybody's PCB will be named PCB1. So I'm going to name it OpAmp. And here we go. I have a schematic sheet. I'm going to name it OpAmp. There. So now I have a schematic and a PCB. Now what we'll find when we do this is that the uh, schematic is going to be on a sheet size that we're not used to. The uh, size of the paper is going to be different. So we might want to go in there and edit that. Uh, we can operate the way it is now, but we'll go here at some point and change that. Otherwise it defaults to a A4 size paper, and A4 size is not what we use here in the United States. They use that a lot in Europe. We want letter size. But for now we'll just leave it where it's at. When we need to change it, just keep in mind we're going to change the size. Uh, on my right side, I have Messages, Properties, 
components if you don't see those things we can add them we can always come up here and add them we can add them down here on the bottom right where it says panels I can see which things do I want to be able to see do I want to see design reuse differences messages right projects all these things are available properties there's the properties there's components now the components are, are the libraries that we're going to download I told you to download them and unzip them and we'll we'll start off with our general libraries which is going to be miscellaneous devices I won't add any new libraries yet that'll be a different video and I can look and see what's in my general miscellaneous devices oh, I have capacitors and batteries and diodes lamps MOSFETs I have a lot of stuff in here but I'm gonna check this op amp I'm gonna make a little circuit with an op amp here so to place that I can just double click it and you'll see the little op amp is now stuck to my mouse wherever I move my mouse is where the op amp will be uh, I can zoom in and out if I hold control and scroll wheel to zoom in and zoom out if I want to rotate my op amp while it's connected to my mouse I can hit the space bar and it rotates and if I want to mirror my op amp I can hit X you'll see now that pin 4 is on top not on the bottom if I hit X again pin 4 is on the bottom not on the top so that's one way to uh, mirror your image that it's handy like with transistors if you want to have a differential pair of transistors you can place your second transistor and mirror it so this will now place this wherever I left click so if I want to place it right here and I left click my mouse my op amp is now placed there and you'll see it's ready for me to place another one now in this design we're just going to use one so I can now either right click my mouse or hit escape and I'm done placing that part so that's how I place a part on the schematic I go to components select the part that I want and then place it well let's continue with this uh, simple design here if I want a resistor here's resistor 1 I can double click it and there's my resistor I can hold control and scroll wheel and zoom in and out move it around and I can place my resistor right here now you'll notice that when I place my resistor right when it connects to the op amp there's a little gray X where my mouse is when I place it there that gray X turns red that shows that those two nets are connected that's what that means if I place it over here it's not connected so for now I'm just gonna place it out here we'll connect it with wires I'll place another one up here this will be our feedback resistor and I'm gonna right click and go to components and I'm gonna select a different one and uh, we'll see why after a while but uh, right now I'll just double click resistor 3 and I'll say I'm going to put it right here all right if I zoom way in on these parts you'll see that there's a little X in here that's where the node is for the electrical connection that's where you actually wire things to if it's not there uh, it, then it's not connected so I want to wire this up so here's my wiring tool it says place wire you can do control W and does the same thing so I'm gonna click on my wiring tool you, know, you can always find these tools up here too I can hit view and toolbars you'll see I have my schematic standard and my utilities I have those set up right now they're highlighted so that means that they show up so I'm going to say wire and let's say I want to connect my feedback resistor 
you'll see I get the red X to here. That works. I can connect my output resistor to here. That works. Each time I got a red X. So there's the red X for the node. I come over here, but what if I go here? Well, it looks like it's connected, right? But I'm not connected to the node. So what would happen on my, on my PCB if I did this? This resistor would not be connected to this resistor and the output. It wouldn't work. So I can move this wire over. And now look, I'm connected. So always remember that. When you wire, you want to see the red X on the node. Doesn't work over here. Right? Right there is good. This is a wire, so anywhere on the wire will work. Won't work here. Won't work here. It works on the node. It works on the wire. There we go. So now my feedback resistor is connected to the output. My output resistor is connected. I don't have my input resistor connected right now. Let me show you another way to do that. I'm going to tell it to place a net label. And I can place, now you see if I hit tab, the properties come up and here's what I've named it right now. It says input, right? So I can call this input and hit enter. And I have a net label that says input. I can rotate the net label. And it has the little gray uh, X. If I place it here, it's not connected. But place it there, it turns red. It's connected. So now, that node is named input. I can do this. And put this. Now, this and this is connected. Just another way to hook up your wires. Sometimes you don't need a bunch of wires it might be easier to use a net name. So I put a net name on there. I connected that resistor. Now you'll also notice that they all have the same values. There's several ways to change that. If I highlight the resistor and go to properties, I can see the properties of that resistor. Now look down here, it says 1K. Okay, so maybe I'll just leave it that way. I'll go to this resistor. And I'll highlight it. What's this one say? It also says 1K. Maybe I want it to be 10K. So I do that. And maybe my output impedance here. You'll see I can see it with properties. Here's another way. I just double click that guy. And bring it up. I can also click it once and wait. And click it again delete it and say I want it to be 50 ohms. So you see how I can change those values. It's important that you change the values and put the correct value for your circuit. Otherwise you'll have this schematic. You'll build your device, you'll put your resistors in and then you'll show the schematic to somebody else and anybody else versed in the art will look at it and say oh look what a what a weird design. Every single resistor was 1,000 ohms. Huh, I wonder how he did that. Well, it's not true, right? You just didn't update your schematic to make it uh, with the correct values. Let's see. Okay, so I have an input connected, a feedback. I have an output. There's my op amp. I think uh, that's probably enough for this video. We'll uh, take a pause here and let you work on that, and we'll have... Uh, are uh, starting a schematic uh, B, so we have a 2A and a 2B.